Wait a second, where's the thermistor? Hi guys, welcome back on the channel. I'm Richard and I make videos on how to make money with 3D printers. Today, we're going to see if we can repair this 3D printer. If everything goes as planned, I'm going to sell it for extra cash. Some story on this printer. I got it for dirt cheap, 80 bucks, because it has severe issues and missing parts, and since then, used it as a piece of furniture. Let's give a look on the issues and what we can change. So here it is in all its glory. We have the control box, the heated bed, all the cables. We should have all the stepper motors. This is our CR10S. We have the red extruder from Creality. We have a stepper dampener right here. And maybe also on the Y, let's see. Yeah, also on the Y, there it is. And that's not a stock Creality stepper motor. Hmm, we have to investigate on that one. The belts are kinda okay. We'll have to look at those. We're going to change the V-wheels. We're gonna change them also on the Y. They seem pretty worn out. I don't know if you can see. And the thing I noticed when I bought it, it had this, this cork sheet. And this could be a fire hazard. We're gonna... Yeah, we're gonna take it off. Let's get started and see what we can do with this machine. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get the control box, open it up and see what happened to the thermistor. So that's pretty much a mess. There's a lot of cables going around. This is one of the motors, which one I don't have a clue yet. This, I think, is the filament runout sensor, I suppose. These are two cables, three cables, oh my. I'm going to make a guess that the first stepper motor pin is the one that's missing down there. And that's the X-axis stepper motor. So now we need a thermistor. And uh, which one is going to be? I have no clue. I think we're going to have to put a new one. I should have a spare one. The thermistor has been cut off. I have no clue why. Got a spare thermistor right here. We're going to put this thing inside the hot end. We'll make it go up inside the cables and back inside the control box right here. We're going to disassemble this one and see if we can find the head of the old thermistor here. So I'll spare you all the long wiring uh, hassle. The thermistor is back here. And I wanna put back the silicone sock. We're gonna leave this one inside and we're gonna have to see what this mess is. We have this one, this I think is a stepper motor. Maybe the Y one, yeah, surely the Y because it has nothing, so I'll just put it inside. And this is another one that's a fan, little fan down there. I'll put this one right here. There we go. Okay, now it's much better. Let's see if it works. Turn it on. And as we can see, we have the thermistor that's going and the bed has no problem also, so these are good to go. Let's see if we can home it. So, nope, that's pretty bad. It's going in the wrong direction. Now let's check the bed and maybe let's move it like that. Yeah, so let's see. So the bed goes and also the bed is in the wrong direction. That's pretty bad. So I'm gonna flip this over and see to change the cables. Let's power it off. Safety first. Let's turn it back on. And now if I'm right, everything has to go in home. So let's see. There's a little lag, but that's homing, so that's a good thing. It's going, it's going. Awesome. Let's home Y. And I think we have to do this move right here. That works. So before thinking about a cooling fan, we're gonna put back the original metal block and we'll see from there where to go. Hey 
As you can see, especially this one underneath is pretty worn out. There's this ridges here. This is from the wear going up and down on the rail for countless hours. These have to be changed every 300, 400 hours. As a 3D printer enthusiast, I was fascinated when the first year thing came out. It promised a big print volume for a staggering price when at the time most printers had one third of the build volume. Creality built its brand on a CR10 and the one we're reprinting today is the evolution of that model. The CR10S differs from the CR10 for its dual Z motors, a more powerful board, a filament runout sensor and bigger leveling knobs. Now that we did the tires for the hot end, we're gonna take out the cork that's under here and take out the tires. When buying a pre-owned 3D printer, always check for wear on the belts. If they have severe damage, consider changing them. Some use cork on the heated bed, but I prefer not to. Some types of cork catch fire pretty easily. Here I'm taking out all the worn V-wheels and putting new ones. Depending on the pressure and speed, they can wear out in a couple of months. Worn V-wheels lowers quality output and being cheap, it won't destroy your finances. I always check for bumps or dips after I install new V-wheels. I like to have smooth motion from the start and not have to chase issues when the machine is fully assembled. Here I'm installing a new belt. The old one started to tear near the clamp. I had a 5015 fan laying around for another build. I made a quick search for a fan duct on Thingiverse, printed it and now it's ready to be mounted. This 5015 will give much better airflow than the stock 4010. So now the hot end assembly is okay, we put out a bigger fan. We're gonna use some zip ties, they're pretty cheap, like uh, $2 a hundred pack. And we're gonna use them to solve this cable mess right here. We're gonna check if the heating block works and the heated bed. And let's hope that everything is on spot, but it should be. So for now, I just want to check that the things heat up how they're supposed to be. We'll see how it handles. The hot end is keeping its numbers, the heated bed also. There's a bit of fluctuation, but I think that's normal. Before doing anything to this machine, like leveling the bed, doing a test print, we're gonna upgrade the firmware inside the main board. As you can see, probably it's the original firmware. I'm not sure which version is this one. I know that's for the right machine. So we're gonna change it with the five minute search on Google. And after that, we're gonna calibrate all the machine before doing a test print. So now we're uploading the new firmware. It will take like 30 seconds to one minute. There you have it, now it's changing. This is from Merlin 1 1.8. It's not the most recent one, but it's fairly good. We're gonna check that all the E-steps of the machine are on spot. After that, we're gonna level the bed and do a couple of test prints. So we're gonna focus in this area. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move away the extruder from the zero position and I'm gonna operate here. The thing that I like to do, and this is pretty personal, I like to unscrew this feeding tube and there's some old, uh, I think it's PLA inside here. I'm gonna extrude 100 millimeters of filament and see how much I get. 96, 97, 101. 
So very, very slowly it's coming out. This will take like uh, maybe a minute and I'll just... So from here we extruded 100 millimeters in the firmware and now we're gonna measure it with a caliper and see if that filament down there is 100 millimeters. And yeah, I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's pretty damn close. So that's, that's a go for me. Now we're gonna calibrate the X, Y, and Z axis and see if they're okay. There's two ways of doing this. Or you do a calibration cube or you just use a caliper and you don't have to print anything. The easy way to do this is to put the caliper in this position on the X motor and tell via fine where to move 30 or 20 millimeters and see here how much the caliper moves. 20.01, that's pretty on spot. We're gonna do the same for the Y carriage. Before printing, we have to check that the gantry is leveled with the frame so we have to check that this distance right here is the same from that one down there i'm gonna use this old battery charger and why because i just had it here on the desk we're gonna put it here see the height that we can have on this side and see if it's the same down there so yeah we're good to go now we can level the bed one thing I like to do when selling a 3D printer is to provide a slicer profile. If the final user isn't a pro with slicer, he can be ready to print in minutes instead of having to tweak all the settings. This is the first print made after the restoration. As you can see, the quality is very decent, considering how much it was trashed when I got it. As we saw, restoring a 3D printer isn't that hard. I had a great time restoring this one and with less than 30 bucks for the thermistor, a new cooling fan, the V-wheels and some belts, now it's back on track. If I can sell it between $200 and $250, it will be a win. Have you ever considered flipping 3D printers as a side hustle? Even if you don't have knowledge on a specific printer, I know there is a ton of information on Google and YouTube that can help you out if you don't know something. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on restoring 3D printers and selling them for a profit. That's all for today, see you in the next one.